What I like about this question is that there is a tax calc in, um, and that is about the maximum that you're going to get in a tax calc. So if you can do this tax calc, it should be all right for tax calculation purposes. Um, there is a little bit of journals in, so I like the journals, I've said so before. And then what I like about that, what I really like about that, is it's a combination of uh, IS1 question combined with companies. So very, very nice. You can expect in further tests, especially the exam, that we're going to combine questions. So you must make sure that you can do a combined question. This is excellent exercise. Not a difficult question, but good exercise. Sweetness Limited is a public company listed on the JSE. The company's core business is to manufacture and sell a differential range of sweets to the wholesale, as well as cash and carry stores throughout South Africa. Sweetness Limited is a registered VAT vendor, and we have to work with a VAT rate of 14%. You are the senior accountant of Sweetness Limited and have been on leave for the past two months due to illness. The junior accountant presented you with the following information. Sweetness Limited trial balance as at 30 June 2013. Guys, very important, always have a look when, the, or what figures do I give you. Now, let's move to the required part so that we know what we have to do. Show the journal entries that the accountant recorded in respect, so it has already been recorded, in respect of the issue of ordinary shares, the issue of ordinary shares in, this, in the records of Sweetest Limited and record the ordinary dividend declared. Journal narrations are not required. What I've seen in your first class test is that you can waste a lot of money by doing unnecessary stuff. Guys, if I only ask ordinary shares, please don't give me preference shares as well. You're just making an effort. You're wasting your effort and you do not get any marks for that. So please, and there's no time in the exam to waste. If you're going to have a sit-down exam, oh dear, there's definitely no time additional built into your uh, submission. Okay, so no, journal the rise. The second thing is I want you to prepare the statement of profit, the loss, and other comprehensive income for the year ended 30 June 2013, classifying expenses according to their function in accordance with IFRS. You only have to disclose up to profit before tax, but I want to scratch that. Why I don't. I don't Well, do I, um, I don't know.
Right, um, then they say we have to classify our expenses according to their function. Calculate the current tax payable for the year end of 30 June 2030. Now, if we have to do that in any event, if you want to do the statement of profit or loss, and then they want an extract from the statement of changes in equity for ordinary share capital and retained earnings. I don't want only an extract. I'm going to show you the full statement of changes in equity. No comparative figures are needed. So, year end, very importantly, 30 June 2013, and that is also the date of our uh, trial balance. Now, share capital, 200,000 ordinary shares, 12% compulsory redeemable cumulative preference share, which equals loan capital. 9% non-cumulative convertible preference shares, equity capital. Retained earnings, 1 July 2012. That is our opening balance. 10% debentures. Guys, what is debentures? Now, debentures is like a loan. The only difference is if I go to, let's say, Standard Bank, I apply for a loan from Standard Bank. But I want, let's say, I want a huge amount. I want um, an amount of 10 million rand. Standard Bank is not um, willing to accept the risk on a 10 million rand loan. So therefore, what Standard Bank will propose is that he will grant you some kind of loan, but he is not willing to stand in for 10 million rand. So what do you do now? So well, I need to raise 10 million rand. So I would rather issue a debenture. Now a debenture is basically, I'm going to collect my 10 million rand from more than one person. We're going to do a short video on the benches later on, but this is really the essence of what you should know. So instead of only borrow 10 million rand from Standard Bank, I'm going to borrow, depending what you are willing to give me as loan finance, let's say 1 million rand from A, 1 million rand from B, and so I'm going to make up um, from whoever wants to subscribe to my debenture issue, I'm going to gain uh, uh, receive then that loan finance. So on the other side of the table is more than one provider of that finance. Now attached to that debenture is a certain percentage interest. So that 10% refers to the interest that needs to be paid on the debenture. So if you are a debenture holder of 1 million rand, after 12 months you're going to receive 10% interest on your debenture of 1 million rand. Now, because it's loan finance, there must be some kind of repayment term. So let's say that this debenture is being issued for a five-year period. At the end of the five years, then we have to repay the loan, the capital amount attached to the debenture. But as the five-year period is, is sticking on, every year 10% based on that 5 million or 10 million, whatever the, the issue price was, needs to be paid to the holder of the debenture. So debentures is loan finance, long-term loan finance, non-current liability. You must make sure though that you're going to provide for a 10% interest interest on that uh, loan finance of 240000 then we have land buildings, machinery at cost price, vehicles at cost price, accumulated appreciation on both of them, trading inventory debtors, allowance for credit losses, 1 July 2012, last year, investment in Invest Co. So we, we also have an investment of 90,000, creditors, bank, provisional tax payment. So that's the payments that we made during the course of the year to the receiver of revenue. VAT control, sales, cost of sales, dividends received, uh, auditor's remuneration, distribution cost, finance cost, which equals the interest on the debentures. So you can quickly check whether that's enough. 10% of 240,000 is 24,000. So the full amount has been provided for. Rental income, admin expenses, salaries and wages, and sundry expenses. Right, the first one, they want us to journalize the issue of ordinary shares and to journalize the ordinary share dividend declaration. 
The company's authorized share capital consists of 500,000 order shares without par value, 100,000 12% compulsory redeemable cumulative preference shares at 1 rand 20 par value, and 100,000 9% non cumulative convertible shares at 1 rand 50 each. So it is convertible into ordinary share capital. On 30 May 2013, the directors of the company offered the following shares to the public. 150,000 shares at 1 rand 28 each. So if we were going to work that out, the amount that we wanted to raise, 192,000 rand. As well as 100,000 9% convertible preference shares at 1 rand 50 each. So the amount that we want to raise equals 150,000 rand. So Complex Limited agreed to take the remaining order shares that the public did not subscribe for. So obviously, who is Complex Limited? That is the underwriter. Sweetness Limited was, however, obliged to pay the underwriter's commission to Complex Limited of 1.5% of the total share issue. Share issue costs are written off against retained earnings. So that's the policy. So if we want to work out the underwriter's commission, how much is that? And remember, underwriter's commission is based on the value that we want to raise, raise by the new issue of shares. So the total value there is 192 plus 150,000, which is 342,000 multiplied by 1.5%. So that means that our um, underwriter's commission equals an amount of 5130. On 15 June 2013, the company received 172,800 rand from the public. How much did we want to raise? 192,000. Is there a shortfall? Yes, there is. Is there an underwriter? Yes, there is. How much are we going to receive? for the issue of ordinary shares, the full 192,000 Rand. And then we also received 150,000 Rand for the convertible pref shares, and that is exactly equal to the amount that we wanted to raise. The shares were issued to the public on 30 June 2013. When is 30 June 2013? Year end. Is there any dividend obligation surrounding that 9% convertible pref shares? For the year in the 30 June 2013? No. Why? Because it was only issued at that stage. So if we go back to our trial balance, 9% cumulative convertible prep shares, 150,000 as at 30 June 2013. So that means it's already there. That's the only convertible prep shares that was issued up till the end of the financial year. So there is no prep share dividend that could have been declared for the current financial year. There was, however, on the um, redeemable cumulative pref shares, that is an old debt. So on that one, we have to provide interest. The dividend payable on these preference shares is payable annually in arrears from the date of issue, should a dividend declaration be made. The above transactions were accurately accounted for by the junior accountant in the financial records. No other issues of shares took place during the financial year. So let's quickly have a look. They want us to do only the ordinary dividends. So it means in total, we have received the full 192,000 Rand. So, Sweetness Limited, journal entries. Guys, very clearly debit, credit, bank. And again, this is old stuff. Don't forget your statement indication. Statement of financial position, 192,000. Application and allotment account, also. Oh, come on. No, um, statement of financial position, 192,000. Then we're going to allot the shares. So we're going to debit our application and allotment account. And do not skip this step. 192,000, and then ordinary share capital we're going to credit with a full amount of 192,000, 
and that is in our statement of changes and equity. Great. Now we have to determine um, the Underwriters Commission. They tell us in the question that um, our policy is to write it off against retained earnings. So therefore, we're going to debit retained earnings with an amount of 5130. And this is also statement of changes in equity. This uh, underwriters commission does not appear at all in the statement of profit and loss. It doesn't go to your income statement at all. So I'm going to deduct marks if you're going to put it to the income statement. So you could have done it in total or you could have split it. You could have split the, the portion that will go to our, um, that's applicable on the ordinary shares. I think you just waste time if you do that. So, and you could have uh, done then the journal, the same journal for the portion of underwriters commission um, based on the preference share issue. So the same thing here. This was the preference shares. Oh, the first one was the preference shares. The ordinary shares here is the preference shares. I don't know why you want to split it, but if you did, there is no problem with that. That's that one. Statement of financial position. Don't forget this, please. Great stuff. When you're in your third year, and further on, they don't even mark your journal entry if you did not do the statement indication. So it is very important. Great stuff. Then we have actually declared a dividend. Um, after assessing the solvability of the company, the di directors approved the distribution of an ordinary dividend of 15 cents per share on 30 June 2013 to all shareholders that was in the register at that date. So that will include this 150,000 shares. So, in total, there were 200,000 ordinary shares. So, the dividend um, they told us these transactions were being correctly recorded. So, that means that, that 200,000 ordinary shares all, already includes the, this 150,000 shares that were issued. So the dividend of 15 cents per share must be then applicable on the 200,000 ordinary shares because those shares are the shares as at 30 June 2013. So if we're going to work out our dividend, it would be 200,000 shares multiplied by 15 cents, which gives us 30,000 rand. Now shareholders for dividend, oopsie, that must be 30,000 multiplied by 20%. That equals 6,000 rand and 30,000 multiplied by 80%. That will then go to our shareholders for dividends, which is 24,000. So SARS dividend tax payable is 20% of our dividend, which was declared 6,000. And then our shareholders for dividend will be 24,000. Now, at the end of the year, we're going to sit with this debit that's lying on our expense account. So that we're going to transfer to our statement of changes in equity. So we're going to clear out the dividend and then we will transfer that to retained earnings. So actually what happens is um, this one here, a SARS dividend tax payable, that is statement of financial position, uh, shareholders uh, for dividends, that is statement of financial position, and then here, when we transfer the dividend to the retained earnings, the dividend will end up in the statement of changes in equity. Great. Good. Let's continue. Then they uh, tell us, land was revalued by a sworn value item, Mr. Pompey, on 30 June 2013 to the value of 180000 it is the accounting policy of sweetness not to provide depreciation on land and buildings. Now, guys, if I run through this, there's nowhere a revaluation reserve. So, obviously, that entry has not yet been passed. So, we're going to value land at 180,000. Currently, it is at 150,000. So, clearly, we're going to debit land 
with 30,000 and we're going to credit a revaluation reserve with 30,000. Now that 30,000 equals other comprehensive income. Now I think in the second part of the third part of the question, um, you have to do the statement of profit or loss. So if we go to the statement of profit or loss, hopefully what I've told you before is please write down, especially when it's the IS1 income statement. Guys, I mean it is a fixed, fixed format. So write down your income statement, write down the skeleton so that you can just add the figures as you go along. And to know that other comprehensive income is going to be after profit or profit after tax. So you're going to have profit after tax, then you're going to have other comprehensive income, then you're going to have a revaluation surplus of 30,000 Rand. So in the meantime, you can park the 30,000 Rand under other comprehensive income in your income statement. Annual depreciation on machinery and vehicles not yet been provided for, so there's an entry that we have to pass, should be recognized at the following rates. Machinery, 15% per annum on the diminishing balance method. So machinery had a cost price of 200,000 and it had an accumulated depreciation of 41,625. So if you're going to work it out, obviously it's 200,000. Less the 41,625, multiply by 15%, and that gives you then a depreciation charge there of 23,756. Vehicles on the straight line method over five years, so where's the cost price of the vehicles? 160,000. There's no other information on non current assets, so therefore we can assume that nothing was purchased or sold during the year. So that means that this depreciation charge equals 32,000 Rand. Now here they say depreciation on all assets must be included in other operating expenses. So the full amount there is 55,756 and that should be included in other operating expenses. Now guys, you have to read carefully for what they use the assets. If, in this case, machinery usually will be under other operating expenses. Vehicles, though, can be in either one of the three categories. If I use the vehicle, let's say, to go and fetch raw material and to deliver raw material to my company, it will be an other operating expense. If I use the vehicle in order to deliver my goods which I've sold to the customer, it will be part of selling and distribution. If the vehicles are used by the admin people, let's say they are for more than one branch and the admin people have to go and visit the other branches and they have a pool of vehicles for this purpose, then that depreciation will be classified under administrative expenses. So you must watch carefully for what they use the assets for. Where do they use the assets before you're going to classify it anywhere? So under other operating expenses, we want to add that 55,756. And they don't have other year, so that you're going to do in your calculations, you're going to start with that one, 55,756. And you can actually, on the face of your income statement, which you've already written down, you can do on the side line where you're going to add all your expenses. So under other expenses, you might as well put in the 55,756 in the meantime. Then they say um, a debt to out sweetness limited 3306 was written off and accounted for in the financial records during the month of June. However, the total amount was recognized by the accountant as a credit loss. Now, what, did he, what was he supposed to recognize as a credit loss? only the VAT exclusive amount. So we have to work with a 14% VAT. So if we're going to divide 3306, the full amount which was outstanding from the data, um, he should only have passed 2,900 Rand to credit losses, which is the VAT exclusive amount. So the VAT on this transaction was equal to 406 Rand. So what do you have to do with a VAT? 
you're going to what is credit losses what type of expense and what category are you going to place credit losses a credit loss is an administrative expense so you're going to reduce your admin expenses with a 406 rand and the account to leg will go to your VAT control account. It is a debit balance, so it's going to increase that debit balance with that amount of 406 Rand. Good. Included in sundry expenses is 3,200 Rand fine levied by SARS on the late submission of the VAT return. Now, sundry expenses will be under other operating expenses. I mean, you cannot put it somewhere else, but why do they give me this? They give me this so that when we're going to do our tax calc, we have to add back that expense for tax purposes. Only for tax purposes, it is 100% correct to recognize it as an expense item in our books. The normal income tax rate is 28%. And the rate for withholding dividends tax is 20%. We've already worked with that. SARS allows a wear and tear deduction of 15,000 Rand on machinery and 40,000 Rand on vehicles. Oops. Now, guys, what does that mean? He says, thank you very much. I see that you have calculated depreciation. Yeah, we've done that to a great extent. 55,756 was your depreciation. He says, but you must just now add it back. I've got my own calculations, and you can only claim what I reckon your wear and tear for the year was. And I reckon your wear and tear for the year was 50,000 for machinery and 40,000 rand on vehicles. Great. Now, let's carry on and let's do our income statement first. There's no other adjustment entries. Then we're going to do the tax scale and then we're going to see where we're going to end up with. So where does our income statement start? Our income statement starts with revenue, not sales, revenue. So we're going to start proper heading, sweetness limited, statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income for the year ended 30 June 2013. 2013 rand and note. Guys, I don't uh, require you to do any notes here because we don't really have enough information. But I, th I think if it isn't in the question, I'm going to add it to the question that the notes are not required. So revenue, basically out of the question, you're going to get the 850,000. Then cost of sales, 381,750. There's no additional cost of sales um, entries or adjustment entries so we can then work directly to our gross profit then other income now remember um, in this question we have investment income dividends on the rsa investment 24,000 rand now we could have put that on a separate line item so you could have had investment income 24,000 in this question they just added with other income so the 24,000, they're going to add, oh, we've missed out somewhere that I talk about the, um, the allowance for credit losses. We haven't done that one. The allowance for credit losses is provided at 5% on outstanding debtors at year end. So let's just quickly have a look at that one. Um, debtors was 133,300 rand at year end. So we have to take out the VAT. Don't forget to take out the VAT when you're going to do that. Take out the VAT. It's going to be 116,930. Then you're going to multiply it by 5%. So at the end of the year, we want a 5846 allowance for credit losses. You will see currently in our books, we have an amount of 6340. So that needs to reduce. In order to reduce that, we're going to debit the allowance account and credit an income account. So the difference there is 494 Rand that we're going to debit the allowance account and credit the income statement. So that 494 Rand we're going to recognize as part of other operating income. So that's our credit losses. That is our dividend income. And then um, there must be still in our income statement this rental income of 36,600 and that we're going to classify as other income as well so other income in total 
61094. There is no, um, if you look at your type of expenses, auditor's remuneration, what is that? Auditor's remuneration is admin. Distribution costs, 84,000, finance costs, rental income, admin expenses, salaries and wages, and sundry expenses. Now, for the sundry expenses, that will go to sundry, uh, sundry expenses or so other expenses, but salaries and wages, they don't give us any further breakdown there. So, um, what we're going to do with that is, we are going to add that full amount to other expenses as well. So, admin expenses is going to be the, um, let's go back. Admin expenses is going to be our auditor's remuneration of 22,204. We have other administrative expenses of 96,300. And then we've made an adjustment entry where we reduced our expenses with a 406 rand. That was the VAT which was included in the credit losses that we have written off. So there it is, 406. Good, then other expenses, it's going to be our salaries and wages. It's going to be our depreciation charge for the year. Here it is, the 55,756, as well as the 61,800, which they gave us. 61,800. Salaries and wages, that that they gave us, plus the depreciation, and that's going to be our other expenses. Now, finance costs. If you go back to our trial balance, we have finance costs on the debentures and we checked whether that was enough and we said it was. It is equal to 10% on 240,000. So it's that 24,000. But then don't forget our good friend um, redeemable pref shares. So we have to go and work out what was 12% on 120,000 rand because that needs to be added to our um, finance cost for the year. So 12% of 120,000 was 14,400 plus 24,000, then give us total finance cost of 38,400. Now we've accounted for everything. So we can work out our profit before tax, which is then a total of 39,290. The next step is to calculate our taxation liability for the year. So they tell us that um, our tax is 28% of profit before tax. Now, where do we start with our tax calc? Guys, you always, every time in your whole life, every time you start your tax calc, this is only a calculation. It doesn't appear anywhere in your general ledger accounts. It's only a tax calculation, which all of us have to do at the end of the year on a piece of paper. But that starting point there is profit before tax. So you have to complete your income statement first up to this stage before we could start doing any tax calcs. Taxation is not 28% of 39290. I'm going to repeat that. Taxation is not 28% multiplied by 39,290. It will only be 28% of your profit before tax if I tell you that it is like that. In this question, there are too many anomalies. There are too many differences between the accounting treatment of certain items and the tax treatment of certain items. The first thing that you have to, have to take um, note of is that I am a company, I am Sweetness Limited, and South African companies are not subject to dividend withholding tax, and they are, and dividends received is exempt from normal taxation. Dividends, guys, is subject to dividend withholding tax, but it is not subject to any normal tax. So, we're not going to pay dividend withholding tax in any event, but dividend withholding tax does not appear in the income statement in any event. So, what appears in the income statement? Income tax. 
and for income tax purposes, dividends are exempt from normal tax. So we have received 24,000 rand of dividend income for the year. There. Dividends on RSI investment, 24,000 rand exempt from normal tax. So I have to take it out of my profit before tax figure. It increased my profit before tax, so I want to eliminate that. Then we have to add back our depreciation. There we've worked out a depreciation of 55,756. Why? Because the receiver of revenue says add back that expense. It reduced your profit before tax. So if you want to eliminate that, you have to add it back to your profit before tax. It says because I have made my own calculations and based on my rules and regulations, you are allowed to claim for tax purposes a wear and tear deduction of 15,000 rand in machinery and 40,000 rand on vehicles. So now I can deduct the 15,000 and the 40,000 as a wear and tear allowance, 55,000. They also tell us included in our profit before tax is a fine of 3,200 rand levied by SARS on the late, sub late submission of a VAT return. But guys, any type of fines that you have received, it's fine that you deduct it for accounting purposes, but for tax purposes, you have to add it back because it's not a tax deductible expense. So we're going to add it back to our profit before tax. So now we're going to derive at something that we call taxable income. So our taxable income for the year is 19,246. So according to the receiver of revenue, this is the amount which you are going to pay tax on. So based on that amount, I'm going to apply, uh, um, multiply that by 28%, and that is going to be my total tax liability for the year. So that is going to be my income tax expense for the year. Very important. So what is my accounting entry? I'm going to debit my expense account with 5389. I'm going to credit the receiver of revenue with 5389. So my, my taxation in my income statement, there, taxation in my income statement equals 5389. What am I going to post to my statement of financial position? If you think about T account, what do we post to the source account for income tax? All payments made to source, I'm going to credit bank and I'm going to debit source account. And the question tells me that we have made provisional tax payments for the year in the trial balance of 4,000 Rand. There it is. Provisional tax payment for the year, 4,000 Rand. What was our entry? We credited bank, we debited the receiver of revenue for provisional tax, 4,000 Rand. Now we have calculated our actual tax liability for the year. And our actual tax liability for the year equals 5389. We have already paid him 4,000 Rand. So how much do we still owe him? We still owe him an amount of 1389. So in our statement of financial position, we are going to show under current liabilities on the face of the, of the uh, statement of financial position, income tax payable 1389. Guys, if you're going to put provisional tax in your income statement, I'm going to subtract minus two marks immediately on the spot. So if you do not post provisional tax to the income statement, what do I post to the income statement? My total tax commitment. What do I owe him on my income, my taxable income for the year? My total tax commitment, 5389. Great. So now we have our tax and we can calculate our net income after tax. So my income statement is going to continue here. I've actually here followed the two statement approach. Sweetness for, uh, Limited, statement of comprehensive income for the year ended 30 June 2013. Net profit after tax is going to be the 33,901. So I'm going to start here with the 33,901. And here's our other comprehensive income, which we've already spoken about, revaluation surplus 30,000. So total comprehensive income for the year 63,901. 
let's do our um, statement of changes in equity now. Sweetness Limited, statement of changes in equity for the year ended 30 June 2013. Ordinary share capital, I'm going to do the revaluation surplus so that you can see how it works, and the retained earnings. Now, opening, we don't have opening balances, we have actually closing balances. So our balance on 30 June 2013 for ordinary share capital was 387,000 Rand. But we know that we have issued new capital during the course of the year of 192,000 Rand. So therefore, our closing balance is 387. All the shares issued 192,000. And then we work backwards to our opening balance, which was then 195,000 Rand. Our revaluation surplus, well, there was nothing in our trial balance for revaluation surplus, so that means that we didn't have an opening balance of revaluation surplus. So therefore, our revaluation surplus got no balance whatsoever to start off with. Right. Now, I want us to go back to the income statement. Our net profit of the tax there. Profit of the tax, 33,901. Now, up to that point, that 33,901, that one I'm going to post to retained earnings. So, in my statement of uh, changes in equity and the retained earnings, I'm going to post profit of the tax for the year to retained earnings 33,901. The other comprehensive profit, so this is 33,901. Our total comprehensive income was 63,901. There you see that. So that 30,000 we're going to post to our revaluation surplus. So if you look at this one here, revaluation surplus, it is 30,000. So those two together equals our total comprehensive income for the year. 63901. When I transfer total comprehensive income for the year to my statement of changes in equity, what do we do with total profits? We add it to equity at the end of the period. But here we split that add. 33901, i.e. our profit after tax, go to retained earnings, and 30,000, i.e. our revaluation surplus, that will go to our revaluation surplus. If I add the two together, it will give me total comprehensive income, 63,901. Please take note of that. Underwriters Commission, remember right there at the beginning, what did we do with Underwriters Commission? We debited retained earnings with 5,130. So therefore, we have to reduce our retained earnings with that 5,130. And then dividends declared, we also did that firm. That was the 30,000, and we have to reduce our retained earnings with the 30,000 as well. And that then gives us total retained earnings at the end of the period of 52,904. I just tell you here as a note again, before all due dividends can be declared, preference dividends must be declared. Cumulative redeemable preference dividends, i.e. interest, must be provided for irrespective of whether the dividend was declared or not. So in all instances where I have a cumulative dividend, um, that must be provided for, is irrespective if declaration took place or not. Great. Right. 